Good morning, everybody. My name is Patrick Gallivan. I'm the executive director of the Vermont State Dental Society. And I'd like to welcome you to our statewide annual dental meeting, which has been happening over the course of the last two days. Today is a great day for oral health in the state of Vermont. And we're happy to announce a really important partnership with the University of Detroit Mercy, the Vermont State Dental Society, with lots of help from lots of people, but primarily our federal delegation has been really wonderful and fully supportive of this initiative. We have a few speakers today that are gonna give kind of an outline of the plan for the University of Detroit Mercy Oral Health Center and Dental Clinic. I'd like to invite, uh, introduce a couple of special guests who are with us today. Uh, the Vermont Commissioner of Health, Dr. Mark Levine, thank you for being with us. From the American Dental Association, our District One trustee, Dr. Jonathan Knapp. From Northeast Delta Dental, a true partner in this initiative, Dr. Mitch Carre and Ms. Sarah Thayer, welcome. Uh, from the University of Detroit Mercy, the Associate Dean, Dr. John Ryder, and esteemed members of the VSDS Executive Board. You're all most welcome. I'm gonna introduce our panelists one at a time, and so I'll have a chance to speak a little bit about them when they come up, but this again is a really wonderful occasion. I'm delighted so many of you are here to cover it. And we'll, what we plan to do is take some questions at the very end of the meeting for the press that has specific questions, and then if you have wanted some follow-up individually, we can try to arrange that as well. So again, thank you very much. First up is the VSDS president, Dr. Justin Herbert, who's been a, a strong proponent of this initiative since its conception one year ago. Dr. Herbert. Uh, thanks, Patrick, and, and thanks everyone for coming um, to join us to celebrate what we think is, is gonna be a very significant milestone. Um, for the healthcare workforce struggle that we face in Vermont. Um, as the very immediate past president of VSDS, um, I've had the distinct pleasure of being involved in this very important project, which we think is going to support greatly the oral health workforce of the state. So about a year ago, the Vermont State Dental Society was presented with an opportunity to partner with the University of Detroit Mercy in exploring the possibility of locating an oral health center in our state. We're excited today to announce significant progress in this project. The dental school clinic would bring a strong educational opportunity to the area, while also introducing the beauty of living and working in Vermont to many new young professionals. A dental school clinic would also bring a solid, consistent workforce to the area, which parallels our two main challenges at VSDS year in and year out dental workforce and access to care for our population, especially our most vulnerable. You'll hear today from Dean Axu. We'll give you some more uh, details about the project, uh, but before you do, we wanna openly welcome Detroit Mercy as a great community partner in the next phase of bringing what we truly think is an innovative and unique way to integrate education into workforce improvement in the state of Vermont. We would specifically echo what Patrick said I'd like to thank Senator Sanders and Welch for their support and what, again, we think is a huge and important healthcare initiative. Thank you. Thank you. A year ago, we were approached by the University of Detroit Mercy uh, to think about the possibility of dental education in Vermont. And it's my pleasure to introduce the Dean of the Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry Dr. Mark asks you. Well, I'm honored to be here. It's been a, a long but quick journey at the same time, many moving parts. And this really, this the idea for this uh, vision really came about because of what I had read in the professional journals, local community publications, as well as efforts in the state of Vermont to help address workforce access and the needs of the people of the state of Vermont. And for us, we struggled with one problem. We had too many applicants for the positions that we could accommodate in Detroit for clinical education. And for us, we saw many, many very talented, well-intended, enthusiastic, 
potential oral health professionals who weren't given the opportunity to be a dentist, but yet could help solve a problem in a state that really needed it. And so we began the process of discussion and thinking about how we could create a program that would allow a state like Vermont to have a dental education program without having the burden of starting a dental school. And dental schools today, starting a dental school, can cost upwards of $150 million or more. And then also you have the challenges of recruiting and building a faculty in addition to the facility that comes with it. As I, as I always say, you know, universities are great at building buildings, but it's the community that builds the university. And so we were tasked, and I was challenged, and I really wanted to find a community that would build the campus and build the program, because it's the community that owns the program at the end of the day. The university provides the framework, the foundation, and the opportunity but with the partnership that we formed with Vermont State Dental Society, we were thrilled to have the opportunity to begin the concept of what would be of what we're announcing here today. So on behalf of the University of Detroit Mercy, we're honored to be part of this process. We are, we are not the process, we're just part of it. And what we're doing here today is the true purpose of what universities do, is bring education to communities both to help the people lift themselves up and help the community address concerns or problems and challenges that they face. I really want to thank Senator Peter Welch and Senator Bernie Sanders for their belief in what we were doing here today and why we were here. It's, it's the belief in the concept that made this keep moving today. The Vermont State Dental Society, its leadership and its membership have embraced us in ways that really keep this project moving too. So each step along the way, our, our, our goal is to continue to build communities as we build the program. We're thrilled to be, to be talking about what that's gonna look like because our vision is, is that we will accept 32 students who delegate and designate Vermont as their choice for clinical education. For the first two years of their program, they will receive their basic sciences and, and preclinical education at the Detroit campus, and in year, beginning of year three, and basically in May of their third year, they will relocate to Vermont to spend 24 months in Vermont, uh, completing their education, serving the people of the community, and learning about the needs of the state and becoming a part of the fabric of your people as well. It's our goal that we will be able to provide Vermont with a graduating class of individuals who will be so energized, enthused, and charged up by their experience here that they'll want to stay and be with you for decades to come. It's really that's the vision, as I've always said. It's not the vision of what we do today that matters. It's the vision of what impact we make decades later that's going to matter. We're not only going to be impacting the patients that we treat on a daily basis, but also impacting the communities that we serve by the student volunteer efforts that go around the state, providing oral health education, providing information about oral health as a career to its elementary, junior high, and high school students, and partnering with FQHCs around the state to provide oral health interns who could provide care to patients in communities lacking the opportunity for oral health care. We've already tentatively identified a site. We're looking, we have a tentative schematic of what we're hoping to build. And we call it an oral health center because it's more than just educating dental students. We hope that it will become a nucleus for other oral health activities beyond just dental education, including possibly graduate education, allied dental education, and perhaps even being a continuing education center for the practicing dentist community. Again, we're here to be a resource for the state of Vermont uh, and be here to provide you what you want us to do. It's, while it's our brand, 
It's your school. You are the stewards of the school, but you really own it. We own it together. We share in its success. And without you all here today, whatever little part you may play, we wouldn't be here. So the next task I have, of course, is getting the practicing dentist community to talk about becoming part of the faculty. And being part of the faculty offers many advantages because many of the faculty that I speak with at Detroit, they tell me that it's a career extender for them. It recharges them. It connects them to the next generation of practitioners and it gives them a perspective and gives them hope for the future of our profession. There are so many dentists who started off by teaching part-time that now have com committed themselves to full-time at dental school. We have teaching models that allow for a blended career, and that's one of the unique aspects of our program is, is that we believe that strong faculty are strong clinicians and strong community members of the community. So we like it when our faculty continue to practice, continue to, to participate in their community activities, and continue to maintain their connection with the places that they've come from and the places that they've spent a lifetime building. Again, I'm honored to be here. I'm, it's my 17th year as Dean at the School of Dentistry. Uh, I think that this is gonna be a model for oral health education that may be replicated around the country. <laughs> Dental education is expensive and we've created a solution that creates a, an opportunity for small states to have programs without the significant burden of costs associated with opening a dental school, as I've said. And so, Again, I thank you for the opportunity to be here. I'm honored to be part of the possibility of sharing with you the success in this program. And I thank you for all the support that you provided to this point. Thanks again to the Vermont State Dental Society, its leadership, and Delta Dental of Northeast for their continued commitment to being part of this partnership. Thank you, Dean. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce Vermont's senior senator, someone who has made a true commitment every day to dentistry. And, and most every time I've heard Senator Sanders speak, dentistry is a word that comes out of his mouth. And I'm really delighted to welcome him to the State Society and to our dental meeting. Senator Sanders. Mm -hmm. Well, let me uh, thank uh, all of those who have been working hard on this project for the last year. I want to thank Patrick Gallivan. He has really been uh, the spark plug for this. And Patrick, thanks so much for what you've done. Dr. Axel, welcome to Vermont. And thank you for the great work Detroit University has done for so many years. Uh, Dr. John Ryder is the Associate Dean at the University of Detroit University. Uh, Dr. Justin Herbert, thank you very much for your cooperation uh, with Detroit University. Um, this is an important step forward for healthcare in the state of Vermont. Uh, it is no secret to anybody in this room that we have a dental crisis in our country uh, and that we have a dental crisis uh, in Vermont. Uh, and that is a crisis, by the way, and I speak as chairman of the committee that deals with this stuff, that is too often ignored. Talk about the healthcare crisis, guess what? Dental care is Healthcare. Uh, in Vermont and across the country, especially in rural areas, too many people cannot find access to a dentist, too many people cannot afford the high cost of dental care, too many people have to travel long distances and wait too long to get into a dental office. Uh, it is no great secret that we have a shortage of dentists in the state of Vermont, and that is true all over this country. Just as an aside, we have a shortage of dentists, we have a shortage of doctors, we have a shortage of nurses, we have a shortage of mental health professionals. In other words, we have a major crisis in the healthcare workforce. This is part of that crisis. Uh, and the crisis is especially acute for those lower income people in Vermont and around the country, including many who are on Medicaid uh, and people who live in rural areas. Uh, the truth is that if you don't have teeth to chew your food, 
or you have excruciating pain every time you eat, you can't get the nutrients you need to stay healthy. Dental care is health care. And untreated dental issues can lead to larger health problems. Nearly half of adults have some form of periodontal disease, which makes them two to three times more likely to have a heart attack, stroke, or other serious cardiovascular events. According to the CareQuest Institute for Oral Health, there are 1.8 million visits to emergency rooms across the country for preventative dental conditions in 2019, a significant increase from preceding years. In the last number of years, we have been making some progress in expanding dental services in Vermont. I want to thank the federally qualified community health centers who have brought in a number of dentists to serve their patients and who now, in some cases, are bringing dental care into our schools, something which I think is a very positive step. Uh, we are making progress, but much, much more needs to be done. And today, working with Detroit Mercy and the Vermont Dental Society, uh, we are announcing what will be a major initiative in addressing Vermont's dental needs. Senator Welch and I are in the process of securing $4.6 million through congressionally directed spending for this initiative. Uh, Northeast Delta Dental uh, has very generously agreed to put up to $2 million into this project. We thank them very much for this. The federal funding uh, that Senator Welch and I are working on has been included in the appropriations bill. But all of you know how functional and efficient the federal government is. <laughs> well, we will see. We're, we're going to get it. And, uh, <laughs> sooner than later we hope. Uh, as all of you have heard, the uh, project, this project will bring up to 32 dental students to do clinical rotations in Vermont in their last two years of dental school. This means, as I understand it, that we, when we are fully up and running, there will be a total of 64 third and fourth year dental, dental students practicing in Vermont. Have I got that too? That's a lot of dentists for this state, right? Uh, not only will this be a significant addition to the Vermont dental workforce while they are training, but our hope, as Dr. Axew mentioned, in, uh, is that many of these young dentists will, once they locate in Vermont and enjoy the beauty of our state, uh, stay here in this state. So uh, I just want to thank all of the people of the Vermont Dental Society and Detroit Mercy for their hard work on this. Uh, and uh, I am very excited to be part of the project. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Senator Sanders. Um, our last presenter is, uh, is the state director for Senator Peter Welch. Senator Welch couldn't be with us today, but we're delighted the state director could be with us. Back up. Hello, my name is Rebecca Ellis. I'm the state director for Senator Peter Welch, and Senator Welch is sorry that he couldn't be here today. He asked me to thank Senator Sanders for leading the effort to obtain congressionally directed spending for University of Detroit's Mercy School of Dentistry clinical program in Vermont, and was pleased to join him in this effort. We all agree that good dental care is essential to good overall health. And it is not news to this group that accessing dental care in Vermont is a challenge, especially among vulnerable and low income residents. Vermonters who lack access to dental care have identified various barriers, including difficulty finding transportation, difficulty finding dentists nearby with availability, and lack of financial resources and insurance for dental care. It's also not news to this group that there is an urgent need to attract new dentists to our state. In 2019, 26% of dentists in Vermont were over the age of 60 and nearing retirement. Not surprisingly, the top two priorities in the state's 2022 Vermont Oral Health Plan were one, to increase access to dental health care for all Vermonters, and two, to expand the dental workforce. The Detroit Mercy Vermont program will address both of these priorities. The Detroit Mercy Vermont program will support a dental clinic in Vermont for up to 64 third and fourth year dental students. 
These supervised dental students will see some of Vermont's most needy patients, providing care to thousands of Vermonters who have multiple needs and require multiple visits to attain a disease-free and stable dental condition. Today, we are celebrating the good news that Detroit Mercy Vermont's program has received approval from the Commission on Dental Accreditation. And in honor of this milestone, Senator Welch asked me to share the following quote with you. This accreditation is an important step forward in the process to expand access to dentists here in Vermont so every patient can get the care they need. I look forward to working with Senator Sanders on this important issue and will continue to advocate for more federal funding to support workforce development in dentistry and healthcare across our state. On behalf of Senator Welch, I want to thank all of you here today who are on the front lines caring for Vermonters. Your work is important and very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, we do have a few moments for questions. We're going to keep it to about five minutes. If anybody has any questions for any of the panelists. Yeah, I'm wondering if you can tell me where the site is. That is the inspection site. How large the building is, and whether the funding that Senator Sanders outlined is the total amount you need, or if there's more you need. So you have three questions there. Yeah, I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> Bert, do you want to use the microphone? Sure, I can use the microphone. So the university is in the process of forming a separate nonprofit corporation that will be Detroit Mercy Vermont. Uh, all of the funding and operations for the program here will be locally ma maintained. Um, the, the exact location of the building, because the lease hasn't been signed yet, we're not yet disclosing, but we're looking at approximately 18,000 square feet for the program. We estimate that the clinical program alone will take about 10,000 square feet, which includes programming for the student clinics and the dental faculty practice. We're, uh, we're providing an opportunity for our faculty also to contribute in the program where our students can see more complicated cases that the faculty perhaps would treat. Um, the funding for the program is going to include university investment here in Vermont, uh, and that investment will continue. The university has already acquired the dental chairs, operatories, and uh, their equipment and lights. Uh, that equipment was purchased for a program that we previously had. Its uh, equipment's about six or eight years old, still in great condition. I mean, dental students use equipment with two or three patients a day, so it's not that heavily used. Uh, and we're, we've been saving the, the equipment for a program just like this. So the university will be investing in this in the state of Vermont as well. And the total amount of, of committed to the project to date is, is not the total amount of funding. Um, and the third question. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. So this is an existing building. It is an existing building. Yeah. So, um, okay. Okay, was that kind of okay? Okay. Okay. Yes, if I could, Patrick, I think yes, sure. Dan was looking for the total investment needed allotted to this thing. So, the university is also investing in its Detroit campus to provide accommodation for the students. So, it's I mean, I, we, we've developed, because we're a private school, we, we, we've developed five-year sort of prospectus plans that we had to submit to CODA because we have to demonstrate sustainability. So, you know, there's, we, our, our students pay tuition that helps support the program and provide support for faculty and staff salaries and, and costs. So, I mean, it's hard to say exactly what the total cost of this program is because it's commingled in with our existing program as well and it's benefiting from the economies of scale of the existing program. You know, we're not having to hire new biomedical sciences faculty. We're using existing faculty to teach in this program. So it's difficult to actually cost out what the total cost of the program is. But uh, there is an investment being made in Detroit as we speak. We just took uh, ownership of uh, approximately 92 new ADEC simulators. They are uh, patient simulators that allow students to learn the dental procedures prior to performing them on patients. Uh, 
and we have other plans in place for digital investment, investment because dentistry is going digital. You know, no one's investing in analog dentistry anymore. So investment in digital technology, um, everything here is going to leverage the assets in Detroit, which is really what makes the program, uh, the, the economies of scale and the opportunity to provide this kind of program in a state like the size of Vermont without the significant investment. I mean, there's, there's been, Dennis, dental education went from a low of 54 schools and within the next uh, couple of years, we'll be up to 80 schools in the United States. So, and the investment's been significant. So, so you have enough money to watch for either the congressional department of justice or something. Well, we can always use more. <laughs> so I'm a dean, remember? And one of my goals is to raise money. And uh, so, uh, CODA would not allow us to pursue this or proceed forward if we weren't able to demonstrate the financial sustainability of the program. There was a question in the back there first. You, no, you. Me? Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Sarah, I'm a reporter with Dean Sticker. Um, two questions. What year would the students be arriving in Vermont? Number one, and then number two, Vermont is a very acute housing shortage, so I'm wondering if that is part of the plan to provide housing or so we've been in discussion with the local higher education uh, institution that has capacity for housing here in the Burlington area and uh, housing both for the graduate students as well as faculty who may rotate here. Um, and so that conversation has been, been we're, we're trying to leverage capacity within local assets and build partnerships in other ways to uh, support the program. And your other? One year. Oh, the, so we're, because uh, we were not allowed to recruit until we received approval from the Commission on Dental Accreditation, our recruiting process has begun. They will enter as D1 students or freshmen in August of next year. And then in May of 2027, the cohort will matriculate here. Prior to that time, we will begin staffing the clinic and developing the patient care activities on site so that we have the the momentum of patient supply and patient activity prior to the students arriving. We've even talked about the opportunities as an elective basis to have some of our current students rotate through Vermont uh, prior to the full cohort arriving. And, and that would be our ideal vision where we would begin then rotating smaller cohorts of students uh, prior to the full program beginning. But the program does have full approval from the commission as a major site, and then may, cons when they say major and minor in the Dakota world, means that all educational activities can occur at that site, not just developmental or supplemental. A major sites include all our educational activities. Uh, that, that's a wrap for the press conference. I um, want to thank you very much. We have a lot of work ahead, and we look forward to celebrating our milestones with you, um, each and every one of them in the days ahead. So thank you very, very much. For